the Mainanju breed, I think, as a whole, gets the gets the perception that we're just a show breed, and, and we're far beyond just a show. Uh, I think we've we've done a good job as an association through feed trials to prove that our cattle have the ability to convert feed to red meat yield faster than any other thing going. And for the guys in the commercial sector, if you still sell your cattle by the pound, this is the way to go. We've made some good strides uh, from a commercial standpoint and to date here and over the last 10, 15 years, we've got uh, finally putting some data together that we can substantiate the true genetic potential of the breed uh, to our customers out there. Along with, uh, the breed has always been well known for its phenotypic design and its saleability in that market, uh, but uh, we've worked very hard to broaden the scope of how our breed is viewed uh, within the beef industry. In the past, the, the mains have worked really good in the show industry, and, uh, and that's a strength. However, a lot of commercial sector sees us as only a, a show breed. And that's far from the truth. Uh, we can show them lots of data, carcass traits and performance data and, and uh, calves that uh, top the sales and the sale rings as feeder calves. Uh, so yeah, that, um, it's a strength to the breed to work both for show calves, but yet the commercial industry can really benefit also. When we look at Maine Anjou, when it was first imported, it was definitely brought in for the amount of growth and feed efficiency and muscle the breed could provide. Today's man and you offer so much more when we look at what they can contribute to the beef industry. Not only can we provide an animal that's maternal and fairly problem free when we think about calving ease, we think about mature size, but also disposition, which is becoming extremely important in today's industry. So for me, when we look at man and you, we've came full circle, but we've still held on to some of those traits that we we're known for in the beginning and we've enhanced in areas where maybe we were a little deficient. We have fed Maine Anjou's over the last 30 years. We've seen a very big improvement in structure quality in the, in the mains. We've seen a big improvement in the feedlot performance of the cattle and also a really big improvement in the carcass quality of those animals. The main breed has progressed a lot, especially in the last 10 years of getting the cattle more moderate uh, getting them softer made, uh, paying more attention, of course, to the cavities and birth weights, and uh, they've just done an excellent job in that respect. Our plans to stay competitive not only in the main Anjou business, but in the beef industry as a whole is to use every tool available, uh, whether that's the EPDs and, and figuring out where our cows lack, how we can improve those EPDs, uh, we're big on using in vitro fertilization, IVF stuff right now, the embryo transplant, the sex semen stuff is starting to get very popular and very usable and um, I think it's something that if you use everything, there's no reason you can't stay progressive. My focus will continue to be adding maternal values to the breed, in improving the milkability of the breed, improving even the growth, even though it's very good right now, and improving the soundness and functionality of the cattle. A lot of the things we're doing here, I mean, and it, it's, it's happening through the breed. We've, uh, on our female side and on our purebred side, we're, we're dang sure keeping them all clean of genetic defects as much as we can. Um, I think as a breed, if, as we move forward, I think that'll help. If the whole beef industry as a whole knows that we're clean, I think that'll help. Um, being able to market some more bulls, some more females. Of course, what, with what I'm trying to do, I think we're gonna see more breeding stock used in the commercial side of the business over the next five years. I think the, the bull value in the commercial side of the business is already becoming evident and, and people are paying attention and, and looking uh, for Maine Anju bulls. Uh, and then I think the cows will also become uh, more prevalent even in the, commercial, in the commercial side. When we think about marketing Maine Anju in the future, I feel very, very positive about this opportunity because we have a great product that we can continue to improve upon. We have many things in our, to me, in hand that are truly assets. We can complement today's English cow herd that we know is pretty much dominant throughout the industry. We can provide added growth. We can provide uh, calm disposition, calving ease, along with solid color 
and there's not too many breeds out there that can provide that. Uh, the beef industry is like so many other industries, it's really at a point with this genetic sequencing and, and um, the things involving genomics that we're going to be seeing or that out there now and, and going to be seeing here in the future. Uh, we're going to go from more of an association creating a certificate to an association creating value. You know, and that value is going to be through these research programs that we're looking at uh, funding or becoming a part of. That value is going to come through in, in us tearing apart that genomic uh, model of the main on Jew animal and finding out what unique selling propositions exist within that model and how we can fit them within, the, within a uh, very progressive beef industry. The genomic tools are actually very useful and effective for small breeders to help identify and quantify the genetic merit of their animals, where in the past they've kind of had their hands tied a little bit because they didn't have very much power from their data because of contemporary group size. Um, so Maine and Jew for a small breed has been very progressive and very aggressive um, in adopting new technology, um, and that's certainly something that will help position them for success moving forward. EPD Incorporation is something that for the main Anju business is just on the cusp of getting very good. Our association's done a great job in the last few years of incorporating the 50K project. It's something that was vital to our EPDs and, and to prove that our numbers matter. And I think as technology moves forward, as we as breeders understand the value of EPDs, and not that just how good our cattle look, but how good our cattle can perform. And I think as, as technology changes, as our association changes uh, and puts more emphasis and, and gives us more tools to use as breeders, there'll be a whole lot more incorporated. This is more about people than anything. And people that look at the data, they become leaders. Uh, and, and in the main group, Mike Holden is who I spent a lot of time visiting with. I, I think Mike has a vision of where the main cattle can go and meet the needs of the commercial cow-calf people. And so I, I would say where they go will depend on the people that lead the organization, the, com the purebred breeders that select cattle that uh, commercial cow-calf people are, uh, desire. Uh, that, that'll be the, the, the lead and decide the direction of the breed and stuff. But I think there's some sound leaders uh, and they'll make good decisions and certainly there are some purebred breeders that we've tested their cattle that they're, they're headed in the right direction in terms of profitability. You know, from this desk, uh, the Reaching Beyond Foundation, what do we want it to accomplish and where do we want to head with it? You know, when we talk about the promotional piece that we put out and we talk about youth education and research and we talk about the funds that are going to be gathered in order to do all those programs and take them to the next level. I think one of the indirect outcomes uh, that I sincerely hope uh, is a product of the foundation is that of a renewed uh, interest in an ignited uh, attitude uh, what the breed has to offer and what it can do in a larger scope for all of our members. I don't think that we totally as a membership grasp what this breed can offer but unless you can recognize what you may be deficient in or that you have lost a little ground in you cannot improve. So with this foundation, uh, through the research, and then into education, uh, we can make our membership aware, or better aware, of what we need to do as a breed and in, as breeders in making their decisions, both in, in uh, selection, uh, breeding, um, and obviously marketing. Uh, but if we can tie all that together, then we have a chance to grow. It's an investment in the future because without that campaign and without that money to fund what we need to do going forward in terms of some of these research projects with genomics uh, and things of that nature, we're not going to be able to compete in a very competitive beef industry uh, going forward. The Reaching Beyond Foundation to me is imperative when we look at the future of the main issue breed. When we think about breed promotion, research and education, we definitely need this foundation so we have the resources available to 
pursue these avenues. When we look at promotion, if we have added money, that opens so many do more doors that we can get the word out about this great product we have to offer. When we think about research, research to me is imperative in our breed. We're a small breed. We've got to utilize all the cutting edge technology out there and that isn't cheap. And that's where this foundation can truly help us get to that next level. When we think about education and the Reaching Beyond Foundation, to me they go hand in hand, kind of twofold. Not only for education of the membership, whether it's through seminars, conventions, meetings, whatever the case, but also through scholarships where we can utilize those monies to help educate the next generation of American Main Energy enthusiasts. Investing in the associations, investing in your future and creating value for your capital.